All right, people, let's get into it. I am Garrett, and today we're gonna be looking at a module add-on for the Zeppin Micro 2 slider. Now, if you have not yet seen that video, link up over there, uh, we discussed that it is one of my favorite compact travel sliders to date. It has the telescoping mechanism, it can have a payload of up to 10 pounds in any direction, or 4.5 kilograms, meaning that you can also get vertical slides with it having a full payload capacity. It has tension built into the belt, a whole lot of things that I really, really like about it. And they have gone and added on a motorized slider module, which looks like this. This is the Zeppin Micro 2 motor. Uh, this accompanies obviously the Zeppin Micro 2 slider. It, the belt comes directly in the motor and attaches using these little cable connections here. It does take a little bit to install it yourself. It's not that big of a deal. The nice thing is, is it does come with extra connection tabs. Uh, I found that the first one that I tried to install with uh, snapped and apparently that's something that does happen because it does come with extras. Toss the extra one right in, no issue, it works beautifully. Now, one of the things that I really liked about this slider was that there was already tension in this belt so you could get really nice, smooth movements. And that has now just been enhanced with the addition of this motor. So on the front here, you can see, I'll tilt this up a little bit here, we have two ports. The first is a USB type C port that is going to be for firmware updates and running AC power. The other would be a camera remote plug. So then you could in effect have control over your camera's record function and time-lapse function in addition to having the slider control built in here to the motor, which is fantastic. Underneath those plugs, there is a power button. If I press and hold the power button, you will see that it powers on. Across the bottom, there are three blue LED lights. These lights are for the speed at which we want the motor to operate. And above that, we have the green uh, indicator light. This will be green when it is ready to operate, or blue if it's thinking about something, and red if something is not functioning properly. So that is the front, very, very simple. If I want to adjust the speed of my motor, I simply press the power button and it will then adjust and cycle between the three. One, two, three, like that. On the other side here, we have room for an NPF style battery or a Sony L battery. This slides out just like that and slides in. I have the big dudes. I like having a lot of power, but you can use any size of them. Uh, there is no lock for this battery. I kind of wish that there was a way that you could lock it in because if you put it in a vertical stance with these big batteries, I'm just kind of afraid that they'll just kind of slide out like that. That said, I haven't run into that, but just something to keep in mind. I kind of wish that there was a brake or some sort of mechanism that would lock this battery into place. Um, across the top here, move this back this way. We have two buttons. It is our left, right, forward, back, up, down, whatever. Our two directional buttons I can press and hold and I can then move this like so. I have not yet taken the top stickers off of this. You can see here that this top sticker is a QR code where you can then download the app in either the Google Play or App Store. The other sticker is uh, one that I actually might just leave on there because it is kind of important. One of the things that I really like about this slider that we do talk about in the other video is that it has these locking tabs here which keep the slider from uh, rolling one way or another in transit, which is awesome. That said, because you can then lock this head into place, if you then turn the motor on and start torquing, you can kind of do damage to the motor, to the belt, to the head, to something. So this just lets you know, make sure that it's unlocked before you move it. It's common sense stuff, but it's something that I can see myself very easily overlooking. So I might leave that sticker there. To get the most functionality out of this motor, you need to use the companion app. So let's dive into that. Using the QR code, it will lead you to the page on the App Store or the Google Play Store for the Zeppin Lab app that will look something like this. Upon launching, it's going to scan for devices. So make sure that this guy is powered on because it is going to use its Bluetooth to try to connect. So also make sure that the Bluetooth on your phone is on because that's what it uses to connect. Since it found it, here we are, the ZP Micro 2 module. Once I tap that, it's going to automatically pair to this device and take me to the homepage of the app. I really like that Zeppin is clearly working on other modules. I have tilt, uh, follow focus, and rotate as options in this uh, UI, even though, of course, right now, 
we just have the slider. I like that because not only does it clue us in that they are constantly working on new modules for this system, but I'm not gonna have to learn a new UI every time they come out with a new module. It's just going to function in this app the same way, which I think is really, really neat. Uh, to adjust the position of our slider, I have a rocker up here. So you see the dot with kind of this curve here as part of this quarter circle. If I just tap and drag this, you can see here I can move it from one side or another side like that. Underneath this, you'll see that there is a looping icon. That icon would be, of course, to loop motions between an A and B point. If I was doing things like a B camera for an interview that I wanted a little bit of motion on, I don't want it to just move from one point to another and stop. I, I want that motion to continue. So that's really, really nice to have there. Across from that is a record button. Again, if we are using the remote camera trigger cable uh, connected from our camera to this device, I would then be able to remove remotely uh, push record and stop on this camera. Again, really great if you're single shooting, wanna run a two camera setup for an interview, uh, but you obviously don't wanna have to get up and push record on the camera. Really nice function there. Uh, this little link icon down here just shows that we are in fact connected to this device. There is a play button. That play button is to play through our A, B points, which have not yet been set. Next to that is this uh, seconds counter that is going to estimate the amount of time it's going to take for the movement to take place based on the speed at which we set and the distance between our A and B points. Now beneath this is where this gets really fun. We have five points here uh, to control our camera's motion and you can see here if I move the camera over and I push one, that will then highlight as red, which will then lock in exactly where this point is. I can then move the camera like so, come here, I now set as two, I now have my A and B points set. I can then do this all the way through five different points if I had five different marks I wanted to hit. Having my A and B points now set, when I push the play button, it is going to, regardless of where I am on the slider, work its way to the starting point and then make that motion through to the ending point like this it then will move itself down until it reaches the end, at which point it'll stop. Really simple, it's how A and B points work. What makes this cooler though is that underneath my A and B points, I have speed control. So let's say that I wanted to start slow and work my way up. I can then drop one of these down, pull the other one up. So I want it to start slow and go really, really fast. If I push play, it'll go to the starting point and start very, very, very slowly like this and slowly build speed over time until it gets to the end point at which point it will then stop. So for very specific types of camera movement, you don't just have one constant speed throughout, but we can adjust the speed all the way across. So if I wanted to really drop this down like that, I could, and you can see that it'll automatically calculate how long that move will now take, where as I move this up, to faster speeds, it'll go much, much quicker, where if I pull it down to slower speeds, it will go much, much slower. And that motion and the speed ramping between the two will always be taken into account even when we have our looping turned on. The next setting across the top here from video is time lapse. This gives us a ton of camera control in addition to our slider control so that way everything is constantly talking to each other. That's fantastic because of course just because I have my camera set to time lapse mode to the settings that I want and the slider set to the settings that I want on it. If they're not in constant communication, you could run into issues. I'm not much of a big time-lapse person myself. I'm much more kind of video focused, but you can select if you want the camera to dictate to the slider or the slider to dictate to the camera, uh, whether or not we have exposure noise reduction, how many exposures per second, the intervals, how many pictures we're taking, what the scene is that we're shooting at, how long that's going to take, and again, the same controls across the bottom here. So really, really intuitive intuitive UI, really, really well set up UI. I don't think I could have done it better myself. It has all of the functionality that I want, but I'm not getting encumbered by crazy amounts of menus and UIs that I have found in other motorized slider apps. Now, of course, you might be asking yourself, when would I ever need this? And the truth is, is actually quite often. 
Humans err constantly, meaning that we cannot pull a perfect movement over time. But the thing that I think makes this really interesting is having replicatable movement, meaning that once I set my A, B, C, D, E points across the way, I have the speed for those points set up. Once I push play, this will always hit those marks perfectly at the exact same time, at the exact same speed, every time, which makes this really, really neat. And of course, with a telescoping slider like this, not only do you have the side to side, but you can actually get push ins because as the camera moves back, the front of it moves with it. So you're getting that cascading motion to where you're not going to be seeing the slider in front of the lens, which is a huge reason why I like this design. In addition to that, we can mount this in any way we want. Like, now mind you, I still have a fairly small camera rig on here. It does take much, much higher payloads. But what's cool about this is that with this motor, I can then control if I want the camera to go down or up. And you don't have to sacrifice the speed of your motor in order to do that. It can still operate at all three speeds, the slow, medium, and fast, uh, without having to sacrifice anything just because it's working on a vertical plane. So whatever motor is in this thing is really surprisingly strong. But you can also do a combination of motions like this. So like if I wanted to do kind of a staircase down like so, I can get this really sweet motion to where you can get it up and down like this. So the motors work on any speed in any direction up to nearly 10 pounds. The motors are also super quiet. I don't think that they're going to be an issue in your audio. Like for instance, uh, with our fastest speed here, this is right next to my face where you're hearing me and then we'll move this. I mean, I actually don't know if you can hear that. I don't think I'm ever gonna take this off because of course this can just do what I do by hand better. The app is super intuitive. The UI is really simple and it makes it a breeze to set up my motions. I don't have to go through endless menus in order to figure things out. I love everything about it. I would just keep in mind the uh, warning label here. Make sure that you keep those unlocked prior to starting the motor. My biggest complaint is the battery compartment not having a lock on it. Uh, I can see scenarios in which that battery might fall out and that just kind of makes me a little bit nervous. Um, but the build quality is incredible as with everything that Zeppin makes. So this to me is a no brainer. I hope you found this helpful and if you did do me a favor give this video a like. If you want to see more gear reviews and stuff like this uh, hit subscribe and comment below what piece of gear you want me to take a look at next and as always I'll see you in the next episode.